Hi everybody. In a previous video, I showed you how CPM had made allowances to have cartridges on the Coleco Atom. If you had memory expansion in your system, CPM would automatically make that a RAM disk. And if you had a specially designed cartridge, CPM would copy that cartridge to the RAM disk. So it would load the software. In the case of that video, it loaded Microsoft Basic, it loaded a program I called that program called Copy, and another program that I called Mount that would let you switch cartridges. You can I'll put a link to that video so you can watch that one. But that's basically what this cartridge does here. That's an awesome thing, but the drawback to that is you have to have a memory expansion. And as I said in that video, memory expansions weren't available. They became available later, but they weren't available at the time. So I thought of something. Well, I didn't think of it. I had a viewer mention in the comments that they had back in the time tried to figure out how to get around that and couldn't because of the way memory's laid out. Again, that video explains a lot about how memory's laid out. And they had given up on the idea. And I started thinking about it, and I realized you can get around that problem. What I did is I designed another cartridge. This one just has Microsoft Basic on it. And then I came up with a way of loading it in CPM. So I want to show you that. First off, I want to remove this cartridge here because I don't want to have the RAM disk loaded. This is my system where I have the extra memory on board instead of in the card because for one reason or another, my memory cards are having issues. This one probably because it's almost 40 years old this one because it was designed wrong from what I'm learning. But having memory expansion on the computer itself works fine. So I have a copy of CPM on here and I'm gonna load that up. I'll fast forward through the load process. All right, so CPM has loaded up. Now what I have here is I have two cartridges. The first one is the one from the previous video. And you see that I changed the label to say memory expansion required. This next one doesn't say that. What this cartridge has on it is Basic 80, Microsoft Basic, and a very small little loader written in it. And what you do is, let's just put the cartridge in the slot here. The way you load it is, you have to create a little bit of code in CPM, which I'm gonna do right now. You get to watch me type. It's a very small piece of code. It's only, I believe, seven bytes. So first off, let's get rid of these. I already have it made on here. If you look, I'm gonna do a directory just to show you. I already have it made. This program called cart.com. I'm gonna get rid of that. I'm gonna use DDT. DDT is CPM's dynamic debugging tool. It lets you do a lot more than just debug. So I'm going to open up DDT, and I'm going to type some text in. I will paste this up on, or not paste, but put it up on the screen so you can see it. And there will also be a link with the actual code and everything you download. So I'm loading up DDT right now. This is, if you've used MS-DOS, this is where debug came from. Debug copied DDT, just like MS-DOS copied CPM. Bill Gates just couldn't do anything new. He had to copy things. Everybody copies things. All right, so now I am at the DDT prompt. I got the dash there. I'm going to type in S0100. What that means is that I want to start typing in, oh, is it, I don't know what the S stands for. It's not, I'm modifying code. So substitute, change, whatever the S stands for. I can look it up, but I'm going to start making code at 0100 hex. That is where programs load in CPM. They load at 100 hex or 256 in decimal. So right now that has a value of one in it. I don't want that. I want to put in these numbers I have here. So I'm going to type in 3E, 0D, D3, 7F, C3, O2, AO. Then I'm going to do Control Z to get out of that. And then just to show you what I typed in, I'm going to list it. And you can see those first three lines 
I'm loading the register A with 0D. I'm sending that out to port 7F, and then I'm jumping the memory address 8002 hex. What this is doing is I am changing the memory configuration. I am changing it so that the upper 32K of RAM is no longer available, and now the 32K of cartridge is available. That cartridge right there. Then I'm jumping to the second byte of the cartridge. The first two bytes of the cartridge contain a flag that tells the ColecoVision whether it's a ColecoVision cartridge, a CPM cartridge, or a test cartridge, or different headers. And then by 8002 up, those next seven bytes, they are used for different jump tables that we're not worried about. So I put that in there. Now that I know that I, what I typed in is accurate, I'm going to type in G0, which means go to, byte, or go to address 0 and execute, which basically gets me out of DDT back in the CPM. Now it's reloading the CCP, get me back out to the A prompt. It takes a bit to get there because again we're using tape drive. The reason I'm using tape drive instead of the ADE or a disc is I want to show you how this was all possible using the original hardware that was available at the time. Nothing new. So I'm at the A prompt. What I want to do is I want to save that little piece of code I just made. I want to make a program out of it. So I'm going to type in save one cart.com. What this means is I want to save one page of memory to the file cart.com and that page is going to start at 0100 hex. That is where CPM starts everything. So I'm going to type that in. And it's going to save out those 256 bytes to a program called cart.com on the tape. Once it saves it, it has to go back and update the directory. That's why you're hearing rewinding is going back to the directory to add that to the directory. Then it verifies that it added to the directory, then I'm back here. Now I just want to show you that there is nothing on this computer. Drive A has this, as you see. That's all it has. And Drive M, which is the RAM disk, has no file. There's nothing been loaded. So I'm going to type in cart.com. It's got to go load it. This is a very small program. Again, it's only 256 bytes of that. The first seven bytes are the only ones I use. And there we are. We are now in basic 80 off a cartridge. What it just did is it loaded that and it jumped to 8002 hex on the cartridge. On there is a jump vector that jumps me over to my code. My code then copies CPM or copies not CPM, copies basic 80 down to lower memory at 100 hex, then jump, then copies at 100 hex, and then copies right after that a little file or a little couple byte program, basically the same thing as this, which fixes memory. Then it jumps to that little program that fixes the memory, then jumps to 100 hex to execute the code. I'll, I'll show you the source code, it's very simple. Okay. So here we are, we're going to look at the code that creates that cartridge. First off, just so you can see, this is Microsoft Basic 80. As you can see, it's just a big chunk of code. I converted it to the bytes because I got to load it into my assembler. Then this program right here I call CPM Cart. And what it does is, first off, we'll just look at it. It compiles to 800 or 8000 hex, which is where our cartridges go. The first byte, or first two bytes, the first word, is the control that tells CPM. This one says do not show the title, but it actually does show the title. I just didn't change any of the comments over here. Then right here, this is the spike pattern, the attributes, the temporary RAM pointer, stick pointer, and then a jump to the main portion of the code. I just left those alone because zeros don't get operated on, and this code actually just, I think it just like changes register D, which I really don't care, so I left it all alone. So when I jump to 8002 hex, I am jumping to this line right here, which skips zero, skips zero, this does nothing, jumps to main, all right? So we go to main down here. When we get into main, when we get into main right here, it disables interrupts. 
loads normal RAM in the lower 32K and cartridge ROM in the upper 32K, loads the start of, loads the address of the start of the program I'm including, which is down here. The destination is 100 hex. Then it gets the length of it, which is finish minus start. Finish is right here. Finish is the length of the code plus my little program called Fixer. It copies all that down to 100 hex. Then it jumps to 100 hex plus the length of Fixer minus start, which puts me here but at 100 hex. And 100 hex, which is now down on the lower RAM, I set up the memory configuration for normal RAM. RAM on the bottom 32K, RAM on the upper 32K, which takes the cartridge out of memory and puts my RAM back, puts CPM and the operating system back in. Then I jump to 100 hex, which is basically jumping to here to start Microsoft Basic. So it's a very simple little code. This header up here probably could have clean, cleaned up a little bit, but I'm not too concerned about that. This works the way it is. So there, you see how the code works, and then what I do is I just go out and I compile it, and then I copy it all over to the cartridge using an EEPROM burner. Now back to the video. But there we have it. I am now on oh, files, not file. I just loaded basic 80 off a cartridge, and it didn't take up any space on my data drive. Again, why would I want to do that? First off, at the time, this would have stopped anybody from pirating things. Cartridges were very hard to pirate at the time. Now they're not, but at the time they were. So they could have released Basic 80 on here. They could have released a lot of code. A lot of programming languages could have been released, or even utilities. WordStar could have been released on it. They would have had to make some changes. This is a problem I had with trying to find programs I could put on cartridges, because a lot of people who wrote programs with CPM, they made overlays and other things that sat on the disk that loaded in as needed. So the code would have been changed so that they didn't require the disk to load as overlays. But it could have been done. So you would have had 32K here to work with for your program, and it would have worked fine. See, now you don't have to. You could, I could pull this out. I could have put another one in. I could have then typed cart.com, and it would have loaded whatever I just put in. And that cart.com only has to be made once for the tape I'm on. And since it's such a simple thing to write, as long as I had a copy of CPM and DDT, I'd have no issue doing it. Now, as you see, I just did that. Now, I want to show you one last thing. I'm going to take out my CPM cartridge, or my CPM tape. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reset it to ColecoVision mode. And you see ColecoVision recognizes it, and it says, my basic 80 add on CPM required, and it won't do anything else. It just sits there. So you can't run it as a game. So there we have it. And Clico forces you to do the copyright Clico, and then it does this little screen drop out, bring it back. It forces you to have Clico in the copyright. So I just said, you know what, fine. I'm just put 2021 in there. You can't change the word Clico. You can't put anything else but four characters of a date. So there we have it. Microsoft Basic 80 on a standalone cartridge that doesn't require any additional hardware and only requires you to type in seven bytes. And now this could have been sold with a data pack that was just had, didn't even have to have all the CPM. Just the boot, CPM boot, the CCP. I mean, because CPM really didn't care. I mean, they wanted you to buy CPM and you had to buy it for the Atom, but once you got it, they didn't care if you made copies. So they could have sold this with a data pack that had CART on it. Though at the time, if you know about the time period back in the early 80s, people weren't afraid to type code in. They would buy magazines and they would type in code. So typing in seven bytes would not have scared anybody. Nobody would have been hesitant like, oh, I can't do that. They would have typed that in. I mean, I remember typing in thousands of bytes of code. So there you have it. As I said, Microsoft Basic 80 on a cartridge that was designed to run with CPM to automatically be loaded if you have a memory expansion. Microsoft Basic 80 designed by 8 Milli that loads very simply. Hi, one quick thing. I was contacted by a fellow Adam enthusiast and hardcore collector. He asked me if he made a donation to the Atom Archive that I run of $100, would I 
sign the cartridge and send it to him for his collection. I was like, sure. <laughs> so here we go. I'm sending this to him. The display is not the perfect thing. Well, I'm not a display maker. But it's kind of cool. It has my screwed up signature right there. And 8-bit Millie right there. A picture of the thumbnail from the original video. ColecoVision logo. And the Adam Bark. So there you go, Rich. Thank you for supporting the archive. Anybody else wants to support the archive, don't forget, you can go on adamarchive.org and you'll see, a pay, uh, you'll see a screen on there called Donate. You'll see everybody else who's supported it too, and donate what you can. Help the archive. Help run it. Have a good day.